think of it's after Christmas, now what should we do? What are we going to do? And I began to look in the Bible at what happened after Christmas in the Word of God. Now, if I can get this up like I'm supposed to, and it'll be there. Listen to this. It was the day after Christmas, and all through the town, the ones who weren't Christians were feeling let down. The stockings weren't hung by the chimney anymore, and boxings and wrappings covered the floor. The kitchen was covered from floor to ceiling with enough dirty dishes to set Mother reeling. The children were whining over what they did not get, and rather than sharing, they were pitching a fit. The malls were bustling with post-Christmas shoppers, searching for bargains on racks and in hoppers. The salesmen looked haggard. The shoppers looked worse. <laughs> As credit cards flew out of wallet and purse. There were no joyful sounds of carolers singing, and the only bells heard were registers ringing. The scene was altogether too grim for all the people who did not know him. If only this unhappy crowd could know that the spirit of Christmas isn't tied in a bow and stacked in piles underneath the tree, he lives forever in you and me. He didn't start in presents piled up in a sleigh. He started with Christ being born in the hay. The perfect gift from our Father above sent to us sinners to show us His love. He came without wrapping or boxes or string, no glitter or glamour or other vain things. He came with a promise of hope for all men that even in death we'd have life again. The next face you encounter covered with strife, introduce them to Jesus and change their whole life. Teach them that Christmas is a daily thing that comes from intimately knowing the King. I like that. I searched and found that. I like that. And, and you know, we, we should remember why we have done what we have done this past week. Now, as, as we read this scripture to you, Luke chapter number 2, beginning with verse number 8, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the, in the, in the David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Father, we thank you for the word of God. I pray that you bless it this morning. Father, I pray that thy will will be done in this church service. And God, thy will be done in this message. Lord, help us to say nothing contrary to thy will, but all that we say be to the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. We see these things that happened, that happened after Christmas. And number one, we see the shepherds went praising God. They heard the news. They traveled to see the news. And when they got there and saw the news, they left praising and rejoicing because they had saw the Savior, because they had believed in what was in the manger. And they left praising God because they had faith to believe. Now, friend, I know it's after Christmas, but we ought to have faith to believe that Jesus did come, that he uh, was uh, born in a manger, and that he is still alive today. Amen. It did, not, it did not begin in a manger. It did for us as far as we're concerned. But Jesus is from everlasting to everlasting. But we celebrate Christmas, but he's not in the manger. Amen. And we should be as those shepherds were. We should... Uh, be praising God and have faith to believe that although it happened 2,000 years ago, it's still real today. Amen. Right. 
And it's still real when, when, you, when we've gathered around Christmas trees and we've gathered in our living rooms and we've watched our children with great joy as they uh, you know, opened the presents they, they had gotten and they see and we saw in their eyes the, the great joy that they had when they opened those presents. We should be with great joy in our hearts because of what lies in that manger. Or what did lie in that manger? It's Jesus. And we should be praising the Lord for Christmas after Christmas. Amen. Amen. And like I say, many people after it's all over with, said and done, uh, how many more days is it till next Christmas is a lot of the thought on a lot of people's hearts. And, and uh, you know, uh, are we going to listen, friend? We may not ever celebrate another Christmas here on this li- in this life. Whether by the way of the grave or by the rapture, friend, we're soon leaving this world. And we need to make the best of every moment we have in this life and on this earth to serve God and do His will and praise Him every opportunity we get. And, and that's what these shepherds did. Now remember, the shepherds were not, were not uh, high society people. They weren't people that had a lot of influence, you would say, in the world. They were common folks like you and I, and their, their message when they left was there was to praise God for sending His dear Son. Now, if you and I can go about our daily lives from this point on until we celebrate another Christmas time, should we not be able to go by and praise the Lord for something that God has done for us in our life? He came for us. He loved us. God gave His Son for us. There is much to praise the Lord for. I, you know, Looking back on last year, most people last year, most Christians I know had a pretty rough year last year. Most people faced some battles last year, faced some heartaches, faced some troubles, faced some uh, all kind of discouragement and depression and all those things. But in the midst of all of that, I'm glad to declare to you this morning that Jesus is still alive and well and he's worthy to be praised. Amen? Amen. So the shepherds, they went praising the Lord because they had a purpose to believe. They had faith to believe and they had a purpose to believe Jesus is what they believed. Listen, they believed in him before they saw him. They believed in him by faith before they saw him in the manger. And as I've said many times, I believe around that fire that night when the angels came to him or whatever they were doing that night, I believe they were probably discussing Jesus and the fact of his coming. Listen, we should be, we should be discussing and thinking about and having our conversation, the thought that Jesus is coming. Amen. We know he came, but he's coming again. And that ought to give us reason to rejoice. One day, friend, he's going to step out and call this church his bride. He's going to call us out of here to be with him. What a day that's going to be. But until that time comes, we should praise the Lord. Amen. For He for his coming and for that he is coming. So we've got a purpose. They had a purpose to believe in. And they had a, a also they had a promise to believe in. The promise of the of the prophet saying that he was coming. We have the same promise. We know that he came. We know that he's coming again. We've got the promise. We should be praising the Lord for the promise of his coming. For the promise that he came and that he's coming back for you and I. The, the times after Christmas, uh, the, now that Christmas is over, we should praise the Lord that he came. And we should praise him that we know in our heart because of the prophecy of the word of God. Amen. He's coming again. Look at the world, man. You want him to come, don't you? Amen. Oh, man, look at this mess that's going on in this world. We Listen, we don't get discouraged. Don't get depressed. Don't get downhearted. Remember, we're living in the last days. We've got the promise of his coming. We've got the promise of his return. And as we have just celebrated his coming into this earth, friend, let's praise him to know that he's coming back for us. So the shepherds went praising. Mary pondered. Now, you, you know, I've, I've tried, and, and there's no way to do so, but I've tried to put my thoughts into the thoughts that Mary must have had. Here she was, a, a, a young girl, a young virgin, and she was conceived by the Holy Spirit of God. And no doubt she wondered and pondered those things. Why me? Why did God choose me? He chose her among women because she was a virtuous woman. And so he chose her. And again, I say among women, not above women, but among women. He chose her. 
and he chose her to bear his son. And as Mary pondered those things, there she is. She has came and, and, is, and know that she was, uh, what was conceived in her was, was of holiness. And yet there she sat in a stable. There her little holy child lay in a manger. And there she must have pondered, God, what are you doing? Lord, what are you doing? How is it that this is going to come to pass to be a great thing? So Mary kept those things and she pondered them in her, her heart. She pondered the miracle of his birth. And friend, I ponder today. And, I'm, and, I, and I believe with all my heart today. But it's a, a miracle, the birth of Jesus Christ. So we ponder those things. Lord, I thank you for your sending your son. A sinless son into this world. We ponder those things. She pondered the miracle of his birth. She pondered the meaning of his birth. Lord, this is the one that's coming to save his people from their sin. And Lord, he's, he's laying here in a manger. But Mary pondered those things, but she said, I've got to raise you. You're my boy. You're my baby boy. I'm going to raise you. And, and, and uh, even though that was God himself in the flesh, I believe she raised him as a mother and dad should raise their children today to honor and serve God, in which he was. So she pondered those things uh, of his birth. Uh, she pondered the meaning of his birth, and she pondered the Jesus of this birth. Now, no doubt, not only then did she ponder those things, but daily as Jesus grew up, and as she watched him grow, and as she took care of him, and she nurtured him, and uh, we know he was found in the temple at one point, and she brought him up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, even though he was God himself, she, she realized that what is taking place in the life of my son is what is totally the purpose of his being here. Whatever he's doing is the purpose of him being here. You remember that at one point they, they got away from town and realized they had left Jesus behind and they went back and there they found him? That was all part of the life of Christ. That was all part of his meaning. So she pondered the meaning of Jesus, the Savior, as he came into this world. With wonder in her heart and with no doubt joy in her heart and probably concern in her heart. What was, what was this Jesus? What was he going to do? And friend, she lived to see her very son die on the cross of Calvary. That was still her baby boy. And then we see again the shepherds. We see that the shepherds went praising. We see that Mary pondered. And then we see the shepherds that went and proclaimed the Savior. They went out and, and proclaimed the Savior. They went out and, and, and told about His, verse 20, and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen and as it was told them. They went out telling it abroad. Hey, we've seen Jesus. Now, where have you seen Jesus? Surely you just had some emotional experience. <coughs> where did you see Jesus? We saw him laying in a manger in Bethlehem. You saw royalty. You saw the king. You saw him laying in a manger in Bethlehem. Yes, we saw him laying there. He's real. He's alive. And we want to tell everybody we know about this Jesus that came to us. This Jesus that the angel said was coming. And we followed where the angel said to go. And we went there. And there we found Jesus. Friend, would it not be a great thing this year if we determined in our heart that one thing we're going to do above everything else that we plan on doing this year. Everybody has high hopes and high expectations of things you want to accomplish. I don't make New Year's resolutions. I just try to do some things I didn't do last year. Amen. But I don't resolve to do anything because that usually doesn't last very long. But I want to do better than I did last year and most people do. Would it not be better if we made up in our minds that one thing we're going to do this coming year is to proclaim Jesus better than we did the year before. Amen. We should want to proclaim him and tell others about him. We live in a rush, rush society. We live in a political correct society, so to speak, where you're not allowed to mention Jesus in the, in the public. Somebody will, go ahead, let him. Amen. If God given me the opportunity, I'm going to make up my mind that I'm going to proclaim Jesus better than I did last year. 
The shepherds went away proclaiming the Savior. We should proclaim that same gospel. We should, we should proclaim it here in our own community, here in our own surroundings, but we should proclaim more around the world to proclaim the gospel. And we do that through missions. I've got a, I've got a, a burden for missions that we send people out to proclaim the gospel to places that we can't go. It may be here in our own country, or it may be overseas somewhere. But for this church to proclaim the gospel, what a blessing it is that we be able to proclaim the gospel as a church around the world. Would it not be wonderful to, to be able to say the, gospel, the, the message and the ministry of Gables Creek Baptist Church is a ministry that the sun never sets on. Amen. Somewhere around the world, there's someone telling about Jesus through the ministry of this church. I think that'd be a wonderful thing, a great thing. You see, but preacher, we don't ever see anything that goes on. And I'm, I'm going to try to change that. I'm going to try to make it, make it so that people, uh, you know, can hear and see what the missionaries are doing. But we should proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We should make it a proclamation this year to pro proclaim him here and abroad. And what a, what a great gift from this church to the world to proclaim the gospel. God give us his son. We should give out the message. And then last of all, well not last of all, almost last of all, we see in Matthew chapter number 2 and verse number 10 that the wise men, they worship. The wise men worshipped. They heard of Jesus. When they found him, he was in a house. And when they found Jesus, they bowed and worshipped him and brought him gifts of, of uh, gold and, and frankincense and myrrh. And so they, verse number, chapter number 2 and verse number uh, 9, When they had heard the king, they departed and loathed the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it come and stood over where the young child was. And they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Friend, is this not a great time to worship the Lord? He, we have just celebrated his birthday. Oh, come, let us adore him. Amen. Oh, come, let us worship the king for who he is. That's what the wise men did. They saw, they said, we got to see this king. we got to go where this king's at. Fellas, let's get our gifts together and let's go see the king. Let's go find him. And when they found him, they saw him and realized who he was. And they go, gave him the gifts and they bowed and worshipped him. Amen. How did they worship? Holy, holy, holy. How did they worship? I don't know. But they worshipped the Lord. And friend, we should make it a great point in our lives from here on out that we worship God. This is a house of worship, and we worship here, amen. But it should not end here. It should, it should carry on into our daily lives, into our prayer life, into our reading the Word of God. We worship the Lord. The wise men went and worshiped the Lord. And then last of all, we see this wicked King Herod. You know what he did at the birth of Christ? He rebelled. He rebelled. Nobody's taking my place. I'm not giving up my position to some baby in a manger. We're going to kill all the babies so that, they, so that he can't live to become king. So Herod made that proclamation. God warned Mary and Joseph and told them, you take the child down to Egypt and you stay there till Herod's dead and you can come back. And so Herod went out and slew all the, all the babies that were uh, two years old and younger. All the baby boys, two years old and younger, he had them all slain because of his rebellion, because of his unwillingness to see who Jesus really was, he rebelled. And as he had those, all those little babies, that he, as he had them uh, put to death and had them slaughtered, Jesus was safe down in Egypt. But then word came to them that Herod the king was dead and, and, and God told them, said, y'all can go back now, but take the child back. So they took him back to the city of Nazareth where he was raised up as a boy. How, what are you going to do this year, friend? Are you going to praise the Lord? Are you going to ponder the goodness of God? Are you going to proclaim his message? Are you going to worship him or are you going to rebel against God? Preacher, you're doing all right till you come to that last point. Well, it's just as important as the first one. 
If we don't do these things, then we rebel against God. God help me not to be a rebel. Now, there's some things I guess I'm a rebel in, but this is one thing I don't want to be a rebel in. Amen? I want to worship God. I want to praise the Lord. I want to be more for Him than I was and ever have been. God help me not to rebel against Him. Father, we thank You for the Word of God this morning. Lord, I, I pray, God, that You'd help, Lord, everyone that's gathered into the house of the Lord. And Father, help us to remember who You are. And God, help us to remember, God, that You are our Savior. And Lord, after Christmas is over and after it is said and done, God, let the message and let the reality of what you've done for us, God, Lord, let it remain upon our hearts. Lord, this world wants to snuff it out as quickly as it can. This world wants to get us into, into thinking something else and, and pondering on something else as quickly as it can. But God, help us to remember the Savior. Remember you and remember your birth every day of our lives. Let it be Christmas in Jesus' name.